Hello all YouTubers, I'm the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Take over to you to back into another tropical discussion for June 6th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that you please do subscribe because sadly, tons of my watch time has been coming from unsubscribed viewers. We are on our way to our next goal of 600 subscribers and thank you guys so much, by the way, for 500 subscribers. Let's get to our next goal of 600 subscribers. All right, so please do uh, subscribe and also as applies to every single one of you, please watch the whole video as well as liking and sharing the video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So today we're going to be talking about our other tropical disturbance that is forming possibly going to be forming to a subtropical depression, possibly subtropical storm Dolly, which is the D name on our list, obviously coming after Cristobal. Please consider after this video, if you haven't already, checking out my tropical storm Cristobal coverage right there in the top right corner of your screen appearing now. Now for today, we're going to be talking about the National Hurricane Center, how the other day it actually did develop an area of possible development just to the northeast of Bermuda. This will be forming early to middle next week, if it does form, obviously. It currently has a 20% chance to develop, and let's read it out here. So as described by the National Hurricane Center, uh, this, again, it has a 20% chance to develop, and it will be let on the cold front, will be developing on the cold front, and it could break off a little bit and develop a little area of spin that we're going to have to see here. So again, there's Chris Dobel in the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico, excuse me. And... Again, here's your cold front. It's going to be sweeping through Bermuda. Pretty wide cold front, actually. We'll be getting steered by a high pressure here, which is kind of, you know, kind of telling Cristobal to get out of here, sort of. And But it will be pushing this cold front in this direction as well. So we have a just on the south end of that cold front. I want you guys to watch because a little intense area of rain starts to form. And we have some possibly some development. Possibly, I mean... It develops a low center of about 1,009 millibars of pressure, which is, it's decent, but it's not that strong. I mean, 1,009 is nothing to laugh at. I mean, that's like, you know, 30 mile per hour winds sometimes, about that strength or so. Um, possibly a little bit more than that, 30, 35 mile an hour winds. Then the storm kind of spins around and it just kind of shuts off. So we'll see. If it develops, it has to develop within the next five days, obviously, um, just to the northeast there of Bermuda. Now, if we look at the gem model... Again, there's your little low pressure center, about 10, 12 millibars of pressure, I'd say. Um, again, there's your rain to the east of the storm. And it could get a little stronger. Let's see. Um, there you go. Just about the same as the GFS here, 1,009 millibars of pressure, most likely. Um, so just about the same strength here. Maybe a little, and then develops 10, 10, maybe develops actual surface low. Uh, definitely looks like that if this forms, I would give it a good 80% confidence. Not, no, not 80% not confidence that's going to form, I'm saying. I'm giving it an 80% confidence that if it does form, it will be a more subtropical storm or subtropical depression, not a tropical storm, because A, there's probably going to be some decent amount of winds here, maybe not too much dry air, but it's going to be forming in some colder waters. So that's why we're going to be discussing this here today. Now, let me actually look at the surface winds and see if the GFS de develops as wind-wise and see how it kind of plays out. So again, there it goes, and yeah, you don't see much in the way of Tropical storm force winds. I do see some darker shades of blue. All right, so 25, 35 mile per hour winds. Definitely a tropical depression is possible. Well, let's take a look at the um, gem model here, guys. And let's go to the gem model. And do they form this? Not really either. Um, again, maybe at best some medium blues. So maybe 25, 30 knots. And then it kind of actually moves back west towards the United States, maybe. That's kind of interesting. Then it just dies out. But maybe 25, 30 mile per hour winds is certainly possible. All right. Now, if we took, take a look at the satellite loop again, there's Crystal Bull down there. And because of that high pressure, again, the high pressure sitting there, going to be sending some rain off. And right, here's your kind of your front that's starting to develop. It'll get another little push here from a jet that'll be developing here. So there's your cold front going to get kicked out to sea. And that's how we're going to be seeing this come together. Now, again, this will be developing, if it does, just to the northeast of Bermuda. And you can see it's not sitting in the most pleasant of conditions. Uh, the biggest problem here, I, I only even say the wind should probably be our biggest problem, but probably our second biggest problem, if not our tied for first biggest problem, would be the ocean water because ocean water right now near Bermuda is sitting about one to about one and a half degrees Celsius below average, which is about two to three 
degrees Fahrenheit below average. All right, and there's a stripe of cooler water right here, 22, 23 degrees Celsius, which is like low to mid 70s. So, which is good for forming a subtropical storm, half low pressure, half tropical system, but it just doesn't have that. It's just the ocean is just not a heat engine like it needs to be to develop a tropical storm. Now, look at the European model. All right, they actually do develop just a little bit more. Now, here, notice your MSLP dropping down here from uh, north of Bermuda, drops down, boom, actually down to 1,007 millibars of pressure right there at the center. It's 1,000 millibars, 1,007 millibars, which is a little stronger than the other models had it, a little bit stronger in terms of the wind power. And then it kind of retreats off to the north and dies off very quickly. So this could be a short lived. I mean, I've had tropical systems and subtropical systems that have just lived for a few hours and just died. It's happened. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure Imelda was an example. When it formed in Texas, I mean, don't get me wrong, it still dropped dozens of inches of rainfall, similar to Harvey. But, like, it was going to be, it was chocolate depression, it was good for a man chocolate depression, or, or invest, all right? And then it moved up, and all of a sudden, it just became Imelda, and then it just came offshore. But nonetheless, very, very dangerous uh, rainfall there that, that, sadly, Texas and Louisiana had to deal with. All right, and then the low pressure dies off, moves, actually, what happens is when it dies, so move up, it'll actually move due west right through Bermuda. I want you to watch right there. There's your low center, moves right through Bermuda, and it actually moves back west towards the United States, which is really weird. Why? Probably because of this building high pressure to the north here, or to the east of it, I should say, and that's actually going to kick it out. Possibly, maybe a very, very minor coastal storm for the United States, maybe just a breeze of low pressure could come through, possibly. Uh, take a look at the dry air here, because uh, Bermuda, I'm pretty sure, sits right about here. Pretty much in this zone, I'm pretty sure. So dry air isn't too much, but the dry air, when this cold front does, does leave shore, if, if the tropical system do, or a subtropical system tries to develop, I think dry air could get wrapped up in it. Like, that's what happened with Cristobal. At first, we had no dry air, and all of a sudden, a little bit of dry air was starting to get wrapped inside of it a little bit. So that's what I'm going to watch here for Cristobal. But however, in terms of this storm, uh, some dry air to the east of where the storm might develop. So we'll see if that dry air from that dome of high pressure could actually make it west they kind of weaken a little bit but um this cold at this cold front will impact the east coast but after that once that cold front moves off the east coast the east coast won't have to worry about it temperatures will actually get about 10 15 degrees cooler than possibly so that'd be pretty interesting but again could dryer get in the way of the storm it's possible again we take a look at the wind shear right now it's not terrible actually our wind shear isn't not terrible at all we actually have some wind shear values of about 10 to 25 knots which is pretty low actually 25, 20, 25 knots is more sustainable. I wouldn't say it's that suitable for strengthening, but it's sustainable. All right, but you take a look at where uh, Cristobal is and not much wind shear at all either. So that is innocent, at least a sheer tendency over the past 24 hours anyway. Now, looking at the potential for chocolate development, why do they put some near Africa? I don't know. Could some develop off Africa, possibly. All right, but there's your, there's where you're watching right here. Uh, that third shade of whatever you want to call that green or Lime green, 20 to 30 percent chance of development based off the NCEP, the, the GEM model, the European model, all those ensemble based probabilities of um, 0 to 120 hours. The development chances is 20 to 30 percent chance of development. All right, um, and we took a look at this is just the NCEP ensemble based probability from the Tropical Storm Genesis again, now throughout 120 hours, and still it's a, a 10 to 20 percent chance. Uh, of developing and again no how that a lot of the ensemble models do agree that it could track back towards the east coast because the high pressure could build to the east and kind of kick it out back towards the uh east coast now even if it does the low pressure does go back to the east coast it probably will start to weaken um because the high pressure kind of like calming air starting to tame the beast i guess you can say that um, but it won't be probably most likely if it does move to the East Coast, probably be like a little bit of a weaker low pressure system, but we'll have to see. But definitely something to keep our eyes on. It does have a 20% chance of development. And I say definitely, hopefully we'll be doing updates on it if the chances might drop a little bit. But we're going to have to keep our eyes on it because it's always something to watch. Subtropical depression, subtropical storm Dolly. Uh, that is definitely a possibility. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for my next videos. I am the Weather Dude signing off. Till next time. Thank you guys for watching.